Hey, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hit a perfect two-handed backhand. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Even share this video with a friend, as those are the best ways to support this channel. All right, so the first thing you gotta know is how to hold the racket correctly. So go grab your racket and participate along as we learn the proper grip. So first, you gotta know two places on the hands. You gotta know the base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pads. Those two spots are gonna go on a very specific place on the racket. So when it comes to understanding the handle, first, put your racket on its edge. That gets the orientation to be correct. You've got eight bevels on the racket, and by the way, a bevel is a flat side. Right? A lot of people think the corners are bevels. Bevels are flat sides, so there are eight bevels because it's an octagon. Bevel number one is the very top, and if you're right-handed, you're gonna count to the right to find the bevels. So this is bevel one, bevel two, if you're right-handed, bevel three, bevel four, and the very bottom is bevel five. If you are left-handed, you count to the left. Bevel one is on top, and then bevel two is here, three, four, and five. It's important to know where the bevels are on both sides because on a two-handed backhand, we're using both hands. So how do we hold the racket? Let's first start if you're a right-hander. You're gonna take these two spots on your hand, the base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad, and you're gonna place, it, place both of those spots on bevel number two. That's this top right 45 degree angle bevel that rides the entire length of the grip. You're gonna take the heel pad and the knuckle and you're gonna place that on bevel two. That is the continental grip. You may also be using this, which would be a good thing, you may also be using this grip for your serve. The continental grip is the proper grip for the serve. Then for your top hand, and if you're right-handed, that's your left hand, you're gonna place it on bevel three or four. Remember, we're counting the other way for the left hand if you are right-handed. So we're gonna go bevel one is on top, bevel two, and then bevel three is on the very right, sorry, left side of the grip, and then bevel four is the bottom left bevel. So for myself personally, I like to use bevel number three. You look at um, Del Potro, he puts his left hand, since he's right-handed, he puts his left hand on the third bevel for the left hand, and like a Novak Djokovic, he puts his left hand on bevel number four. So to hold the racket properly as a right-hander, you're gonna put the base knuckle and heel pad, the bottom hand on bevel two, and the top hand is gonna be on either bevel three or bevel four. Try both and figure out which one feels best for you. If you're a left-hander, you're gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna be the opposite. The left hand is on the bottom, you're gonna hold bevel number two, and the top hand, the right hand, will either be on bevel three, which is the side, or bevel four. Typically, when you hold bevel four with the top hand, you'll get a little more spin. If you hold number three, you can drive through the ball and hit a little flatter and a little faster. All right, now that we understand how to hold the racket correctly, let's talk about the actual swing. So I'm gonna be using the Top Spin Pro for this demonstration. I am an affiliate. You can check out my affiliate link in the description below. It is an awesome product. If you're a parent, a coach, or a player, you need to pick up a Top Spin Pro. So there are six two-handed backhand checkpoints. I'm gonna show you them from both the back and from the side, and then we're gonna go over them. So, checkpoint number one is the ready position. Checkpoint number two is the unit turn. Checkpoint three is the drop. Checkpoint four is the contact. Checkpoint five is the extension. And checkpoint six is the finish. So watch this again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me show you this from the side. I think watching it from all different angles really helps. Checkpoint one, checkpoint two, checkpoint three, checkpoint four, checkpoint five, checkpoint six. I'm gonna do it without stopping at each checkpoint right now, and yes, I'm gonna be explaining all of this, but let me go slowly from checkpoint to checkpoint smoothly, and you'll actually be able to see that what I just demonstrated from each checkpoint is actually a really nice looking two-handed backhand. Watch it one more time. All right. Let's go over checkpoint number one. In fact, I'm gonna face the camera for checkpoint number one, just so that you can see a little more detail. Checkpoint one is the ready position. I'm not a fan of calling it a, 
a starting position or a waiting position, yet that's how most people wait, right? They're playing and they're like this. Their elbows are in, their racket's down to the side. I want you to truly be ready in your ready position. So that means having the racket up, and the racket's gonna be about 45 degrees leaning away from you. You don't want the racket like this, but you certainly don't want it down. About 45 degrees leaning away from you is good. There should be good space between you and the racket. You don't want the racket sticking in against your belly button. And you want your elbows out. This is really, really important in making sure that both the forehand and the backhand, because remember, the ready position is ready for either side. The ready position helps us to be correct in the next checkpoint. Each checkpoint's job is to help the next checkpoint be correct. So getting your elbows out, which you'll see why in a second, is vital for having a really good unit turn later on in the swing. My feet are apart, my, my knees are bent, I'm split stepping as my opponent hits the ball. Be truly ready in your ready position and it's gonna help you hit a better two-handed backhand. All right, let's talk about the unit turn. Now it is exactly that. As soon as you see that your opponent has hit you a backhand, we want to change the grip to a two-handed backhand and we want to turn our entire body as a unit. Most amateur players I see who struggle with their two-handed backhand, they wait for the ball to bounce and then they take their racket back. Well, if the, the ball lands very deep, you're gonna be chronically late. So what I'm not saying is that you have to yank your racket back really fast. That's, I think, where people misinterpret what I'm saying. There's a difference between driving fast to work and leaving early for work. Those are two different ideas, so you don't want to get them, compl uh, get, get them confused. As soon as you see the ball come off your opponent's racket, just begin the process of taking the racket back. In fact, when you leave early, just like when you leave for work early, when you leave early, you get to take your time and you're not rushed. And that's a recipe for success on the two-hander. So our elbows are out, we split step as the opponent hits. The moment we see the ball come off our opponent's racket, we change the grip to the backhand and we take the racket back 180 degrees. In fact, if I just face you in my ready position and I go back to my forehand grip, you can see I'm in my ready position. The, the backswing, moves the racket 180 degrees back. And you can do that right now with me. Just stand in your house, ready position, just turn your body 90 degrees, take the racket all the way back 180, and then just face your racket and see if you're in a ready position facing the other, other direction. The take back is 180 degrees. The body turns around 90 or even a little more, but the racket goes back 180. A couple things you notice when I take my racket back my racket head stayed up. I don't want you going down, if you can help it, taking the racket back. Try to keep the racket at the same height as your ready position. Depending on the height of contact, let's say the contact is really high, you might wanna take the racket up a little bit just to deal with the higher contact, but simply speaking, just take the racket all the way back behind you. You'll notice that my elbow is up and that it's not down. Remember, each checkpoint's job is to help the next checkpoint be correct. There are six checkpoints. So checkpoint number one is helping checkpoint two be correct. Checkpoint two is helping checkpoint three be correct, and so on, like a row of dominoes knocking over the next domino. When my elbow, elbows were out in the ready position, and you can see there's a difference between this and this. When my elbows are out, when I take my racket back, my elbow is up. This elbow up idea is commonly known in, in tennis coaching and playing, and I'll explain why in a second. But most players in their ready positions have their elbows down. And when your elbows are down, when you take the racket back, it'll be down and then you gotta lift it. So why not just start with your elbows up and then you're truly ready for checkpoint number two. When your racket's in the back and your elbow's up, it helps keep your racket on edge. Look at Novak Djokovic take the racket back. His racket's on edge. If he had a coin, he could place a coin on the edge of the racket. What happens when the elbow drops is two things occur. One, the swing starts to go pretty far behind you. And for every foot your racket travels this way, it has to then travel that same direction, or I should say the opposite direction to get back on track. And then you start swinging around your body. So your swing becomes more like a merry-go-round rather than a Ferris wheel, which is what we actually want, that high, low, high swing that's so beautiful on Novak Djokovic's backhand, giving him tons of topspin. 
Not only does keeping the elbow up help the swing not go too far back, but it also makes sure that when the racket's on edge, it then makes it easier to then close the racket face. Checkpoint two allows for checkpoint three to be correct, which we're gonna talk about now. When the racket falls on a two-handed backhand, you wanna think of closing the racket face around, around 45 degrees. Between 30 and 45 degrees is great. We want the racket to be tilted down when we drop the racket down in the back because that's gonna allow us to swing up to contact and have the, the ball go forward over the net. I watch so many players every day at the club where I coach here, and players on their two-handed backhand, even if they turn high, they then drop and their racket is on edge. When the racket is at the bottom, you should not be able to take a coin and place it on the edge of the racket. As you drop your racket, you have to tilt your racket down, and you do that manually with your left palm. You just turn the left palm to the ground, and you'll feel your left palm turn toward the ground, closing the racket face from below contact. So let's go over what we got so far. We're in our ready position with our elbows out. The moment the ball comes off our opponent's racket, we change the grip to our new continental bottom hand, right, which is the backhand grip. We turn. The back elbow's up. Again, I could face the camera in my ready position just to make sure that my racket is all the way behind me. I'm then adjusting for the ball. I then sink my body down, not just drop the racket, but I also sink my body down to make it easier to get the, below the level of contact. Swinging low to high is what's gonna give us topspin. Well, I'm not the tallest guy in the world, but if you're somewhat, someone who's, who's actually tall, it's even more important that you get your legs down to make sure you're below the level of contact so we can swing low to high. So checkpoint number three is dropping down below contact with the racket tilted around 45 degrees. Now that we are below contact, we can then swing up and away from our body to get to checkpoint number four, which is the contact. At contact, a couple things are occurring. One, we've, we've stood back up. Remember, we're sitting down and bending our knees to get the racket below contact. Now we wanna press and use that lower leg link from the knee to the ankle and press up to transfer the energy from the ground all the way into the ball. We're brushing up the back of the ball. I'll show you this from the side. Watch my racket go, watch my racket go from low to high, brushing up the back of the ball. The nice thing about the Top Spin Pro is you can actually see the ball spin. So the ball rotates so you can see and feel top spin. So you get the instant feedback that you're doing it correctly. So we are below contact in checkpoint three. We then come up to contact, which is checkpoint number four, and we're brushing up the back of the ball. We don't want to think of rolling the racket. Players who think they're rolling the racket over the ball, it's just a feeling. It's actually not what um, actually happens and it's not the recipe for success. When you do this as you're hitting the ball, what are the chances you're gonna time it perfectly that the strings are facing forward? Very small chance. If you're a little late, the strings are open. If you're a little early turning, then the strings are closed and then you're just, you're having to watch videos like this in order to try to gain confidence. So we don't want to feel this as we hit the ball. All we wanna do is set the racket below contact with the strings tilted. I get down below the ball and I come up and I just brush. And my goal is just before during and just after contact, I have the feeling that my strings are facing my target. That is a recipe for success. Checkpoint number five, I've already made contact. Now I wanna do what's called the left side of the letter V. This is one of the hallmarks of a Novak Djokovic backhand. I would say around 60 to 70% of the time on Novak's backhand, he keeps the racket to the left side of his hands. He swings up and his racket is tilted like it's the left side of the letter V. He does not let the racket cast or snap over to the right. Players who struggle with their two-hander almost always have the racket over to the right of their hands, where Novak keeps it. See this angle? The angle between the forearm and the racket? That's one of the secrets to Novak's backhand. It makes him so incredibly precise because he has no wrist play. 
he keeps his strings facing his target, even when he's stretched and way off returning serve, or you see these amazing off balance backhands where he's stretching in this crazy split open stance and he rips the ball down the line because there's no casting, there's no wrist as he hits. He just keeps the racket to the left of his hands, helping his strings face his target for an incredibly long time and he's super consistent because of it. You're gonna swing low to high, keeping the racket to the left of your hands and if you are someone who uh, struggles with accuracy, you could actually stop at this point. You could actually stop right here, especially on return to serve, to be more accurate. But if you're feeling confident and you're feeling like you can you know, control the swing even at a faster speed, that's when you're gonna let the racket relax. The hands are still higher than your eyes. My armpits are exposed to the opponent. And you can see this space right here. You can see this space between my elbows. And then I go back to the ready position. You'll see in my finish how my back foot is up on the toe. That's because my hips have turned from contact to extension. Look at my hips. Look at my hips turn. Racket stay to the left of my hands and then I bend. Again, my hands are higher than my eyes and then I go back to the ready position. Watch this now from the side. I'm in my ready position, elbows are out. I split step as the opponent hits the ball. The moment I see the ball come to me, I change the grip. I personally use a semi-western forehand, so I'm going to change two bevels over to a continental, bevel four to bevel two. My elbows are out. I turn my body 90 degrees or just past 90 degrees. My racket travels 180. Again, I'm hitting the ball that way, but I could always just turn around and face my racket, and I'm in a ready position again because the racket goes back 180. I go back, I move around, my back elbow is up, that keeps my racket from opening up, which makes it more difficult to close the racket face, and I gotta roll my wrist as I hit. This back elbow is vital to helping get your strings closed. I'm below the ball, I then swing low to high, brushing up the back of the ball. I don't let the racket flick over, I don't let my wrists cross, as I swing up, the racket stays to the left of my hands, and then I just finish with my hands high, looking over my left shoulder. Watch it from the front. Elbows out, turn, I drop and close, I brush and extend, look how high my swing is. This is how high Novak gets. Watch him hitting backhands. You'll be amazed how high he goes. Then he lets the racket drop behind his head. Forehand grip. I change to a backhand grip, turn all the way back, drop, lift, extend, and then let the racket go. So just watch me hit some demonstration backhands from all different angles. Try to soak in what you see. Look for the checkpoints. In fact, I'll do some of these swings in slow motion. Look for the checkpoints. Look for all six from the ready position to the unit turn to getting below the ball and brushing low to high with the extension and the finish. If you start making these changes in your game, you're gonna gain a lot of control, consistency, and confidence in your backhand.
So improving your two-handed backhand really comes down to understanding the grip, what grip you should be using with both hands, and then understanding the six two-handed backhand checkpoints. Check out the Topson Pro again. My affiliate link is in the description below. Check out the Topson Pro. If you are a parent, get this for your child. If you're a coach or a player, this is incredible at home and on court practice for all of your ground strokes. It is an awesome, awesome product and I am proud to show it to you today. This is Ryan over at 2MinuteTennis.net and I'll see you in the next video.